In this video, we'll cover the minor additions we made to the 12 volt system in our 4 volt camper hog shell. Then we'll look at the amps that e each component pulls. Knowing the amp loads can help you decide on your battery and solar needs. This is the original wiring and uh, fuse diagram that came with the camper. We did not opt for the floodlights, so we used that circuit in the upper left in the wiring diagram in the fuse block to power the refrigerator 12 volt socket and USB port in the front of the camper. This is the revised fuse block with the upper left fuse added and this is the revised schematic with the upper left box showing refrigeration outlets. The 12 volt circuits we added for the refrigerator and, and USB go um, to the front of the camper. They go underneath um, the front wall and that's the USB uh, socket back there. And then we go into the passenger side and they go into the uh, narrow compartment under the refrigerator into this junction box. We have AC plugs on the left, USB, and uh, 12 volt sockets. And that's primarily to power our refrigerator. We also added this inexpensive little uh, battery monitor. We really just use the uh, voltage on the upper left and the current or amps on the upper right. And uh, this is valuable in knowing how low your battery is. I, I don't know how you would uh, maintain a decent battery life without knowing what the voltage is. But the current or the amps is also valuable to decide if you need uh, solar and how much solar you need. We'll measure the amp loadings in our camper in this video. In the next video, we'll look at an amp hour budget. Before we measure the amps, I want to show you the shunt that comes with the battery monitor. This goes on the negative post of the battery and basically allows you to get an amp reading. I'll put a link for the battery monitor and all the other components in the description. Let's look at the amp loads in our Hawk shell. Our battery monitor shows the amps in the upper right corner. So first we'll look at the fantastic fan at setting number one. So let's call that about 1.35. Next we'll look at setting number two. And we're getting about 1.9. Setting three. Looks like about 2.7. So next we'll look at to let the uh, amps settle down a little bit. Okay. We'll look at the light. And we're getting about 0 0.4 amps. Next we'll look at a USB phone plugged into the USB ports in the front. That looks like uh, changing a little bit, but uh, 0.5 amps, let's call it. And finally, uh, not finally, but the refrigerator in eco mode, which is what we use when we travel.
Okay, it's coming up to about 3.8. And finally the furnace. The propane's not on, we're just checking the fan amps. And uh, let's call that 2.6 amp. And now we'll check the uh, porch light, the little amber porch light, not the floodlight. And it looks like about 0 0.2. Two, six amps. Here are the amp readings we made. I've subtracted the 0 0.13 amps that is always there due to the COLP detector to get the baseline corrected amps. I've also added a reading for the light strip when dimmed, which is less harsh and uses very little juice. Also, note the phone plugged into the USB port may have been pretty charged up, so it is possibly well below the rated amps for most phone circuits. It could be as high as 2.1 amps. Finally, note the furnace and the refrigerator pull the most amps when on, but they cycle on and off, so the average amps they actually pull from the battery is much less. Our little 31-quart Indel refrigerator cycles on about 20% of the time when ambient temperatures are around 70 to 80 F. So the average load is only about 0.63 amps. Nevertheless, it runs 24 hours a day, so it still uses 15 amp hours of our battery charge and even more on really hot days. It's our biggest load, even though it is a high-efficiency Danfoss compressor type with extra insulation. We'll cover it in a future video. In the next video, we'll use these readings to construct our amp hour budget. If you do one for yourself, you'll get a better feeling for how much battery or solar you need. But don't feel you got to do this. Just get your rig and see how it goes. That's what we did. This little nerd side trip just helps us to understand what's going on with our own system. Well, that's our 12-volt system. Please subscribe and please check the description below for links to the components we used. Thanks for tuning in.